This is it's a web page, and it's an ASP application. So you can use SharePoint Designer to customize the form, to make it look different, make it behave different if you want to. What I suggest, though, you know, you're familiar with the whole KISS thing? Keep it simple, stupid? I'm also a big believer in SIS. Start it simple, stupid. And from that standpoint, use the out of the box. Don't invest a huge amount of time. Do a basically a, a, a test rollout. Get some feedback as far as what works and what doesn't work because, again, I've seen countless sites where it just seemed like such a great idea. Nobody uses it. But we customize it. We spend a whole ton of time on it. And apparently I just entered puberty. Uh, we do all that kind of stuff and nobody uses it. As opposed to if you do something that's relatively close to the out-of-the-box functionality and you say, let's use this for a week. And then let's get back and talk about what works and what doesn't. And then we can talk about customizations and changes that are specifically based on the end user's actual experience. Okay, that makes sense. Well, you're talking about document management. Mm -hmm. um, being relatively new to you know, web applications with you know, data being stored up there. Mm -hmm. um, not everything we do would have you know, needs to be shared or needs to be you know, put in SharePoint. For documents that are, one of the things that I'm trying to get my arms around, to upload it, people use it, modify the documents, mm -hmm. change it, it's approved, blah, blah, blah. I was guessing there's, there's mechanisms that to make sure that gets back on, you know, uh, uh, you know a, a server, our server, yeah. cool. final form, right? And that could be automated. Let's, let's, let's split that into three. In the workflow. Let's, let's split that into three questions. And, and I have good answers for two of them. And we probably won't have time to get into the third. Okay, the first one is, it's a good point, is where, this, where the heck is this stuff stored? Actually, the documents in the document library and its ways around this are primarily stored in a SQL Server database. Okay, so you do not have a traditional file folder on a server somewhere that's sitting there, here's all the documents. They're in a SQL database. And if you look at the SQL database directly, not with SharePoint, you will not have a clue how the heck or where the heck they are. You got to go through SharePoint. Okay, um, so that's a how they're how they're stored, with some exceptions, which we'll get into in a second. The second uh, question is security. In order, to, it's just like any other website or any other secure website. You have to have credentials. Now, and this kind of gets gets over to your point as as well. SharePoint services comes with the connection the connectability that you have for the Windows server. So if you bought 20 CALs, 20 licenses to connect to the server, or you have that within your organization, you can have those 20 people connect to it and so on and so forth. Primarily, it's based on people who have uh, membership in your Active Directory, so your network users. Okay, you're just talking about using it for your customers. How are they going to get access to it? Well, this is a SharePoint that's SharePoint Services implementation that's on our server uh, down at our Worldwide International Headquarters. Um, but I'm getting to it remotely. But I'm logging on to it with my Active Directory credentials. So I have to give password and, uh, or account name and password. If I'm at the office, I don't have to. It automatically knows because we've got the connectivity there. In order for the external people to have access, they have to have Active Directory credentials. Okay? which means you have to have a user account set up for them. That uses account. Now, there are additional licensing options for SharePoint services where you can get for web access and all that kind of good stuff. So there are alternatives, but if you get, it depends on the number of customers that you have, the number, you know, you want to take a look at what the most economic way of, uh, of doing that is. Okay, now, okay, I'll get to the bad one. If someone wants to make a change to a document here, essentially when they go to the document library, if I have the rights to modify a document, 
And I hope this is not a read only or edit because I have the rights to do that. It could also be just a read only. In which case, I'll be totally protected unless a person knows how to cut and paste. <clears throat> I know. Who knows how to do that? Okay. Put in my credentials. Yeah, let's see. And boom. So now I have, and I start with because it, hey, it doesn't know, it's unsafe, I'm going to enable editing. Here's the problem there is no way to force the user to save the document back up on the SharePoint site. If they click save, it will do that. But they could also do a save as or a print it or do whatever. SharePoint has no control over that. Because there is that separation between the two technologies. All right? So if you look at it as a, as a true management of your documents, if you, in order for you to say, yes, this is a good man, it's a management tool, you would have to basically say, if it's not on the SharePoint site, we don't consider it a legitimate document. Okay, that's really great, but very tough to enforce. So. SQL Server that it's being stored in. Mm -hmm. Is that Microsoft's maybe SQL Server with size limitation? Uh, it's, it's the it can be SQL Express, which has four gigs on the database side, I think. Um, but if you want to get some of the robust uh, indexing and all that kind of thing, you want to go with the full with the full SQL. You buy SQL. You buy SQL. Now, you can migrate from one to the other. So you can start small and then, and then, and SQL Express, if you've got the appropriate resources on the server level, is actually pretty good. Somebody else? Yeah. Was this question about this though, how it gets back on the company server? Okay. One of the documents. Yeah. Right there. If I click save, I open the document in Word, and if I save it, it goes right back up to the website. Goes to the website. Goes to the there. SharePoint site. Yeah. This is your company site. SharePoint is your site. You can have, I'm sorry, I should, should have been clear. Thank you. Um, SharePoint yeah, server. Not everything I have is up on my corporate no. hard drive. That, you know yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. And, and it sounds like you guys, that's what I'm trying to get my hand on too. It sounds like you guys, everything lives on that SharePoint site. Okay. All your, your library, your documents, and that. You know, I, I would envision sort of our usage being, being more restricted to documents of literally multiple input from mm -hmm. multiple parties. Relatively few of them do. So why would I use SharePoint for everything when, you know, I've already got a system? Organizing my folders and my, you know, oh, absolutely. You get what I'm saying? Absolutely. So we have two solutions for it. And by the way, is just in IT today, this is there's never been what more of what I call a solution rich environment for every issue. Okay. So first of all, do I recommend that you use SharePoint for all files? No, absolutely not. You use them for the ones that this kind of technology makes sense. So you keep your traditional file server with your NTFS permissions. So you're going to upload stuff. them and you're going to have the downloads. Or, or you decide these type of documents belong here, these type of documents belong here. No, I don't want two different. Okay. Then when I need to find it in the future, how do I, you know. The second option you have is what's called um, SharePoint workspaces. Is that the right term? And what you can do is you can actually designate folders on your network, and it will do that. It will synchronize the stuff back and forth between that file folder that you're used to and the SharePoint site. Automatically. Automatically. Automatic. Yep. So if he goes to his, his uh, normal corporate site and looks at a document that other people have been full with, he's looking at the latest one, too. Yes. Even if he didn't go to the SharePoint site to look at it. Yep. Okay. Now, that's called. Sorry. SharePoint Managed Workspace. 
this is where I get the, the terms of it. It's included in 2010. Yeah, it's uh, SharePoint Workspace 2010. And I don't, as you can see, I'm not really using it right now. But you've got that. Another thing that you can do with the SharePoint services is you can sync them to Outlook. What that does So now what I've done is on my Outlook, I now have a folder that is the SharePoint site. And every time my Outlook connects, it will synchronize back and forth. So if I'm offline, I do not have internet connectivity, I can open up my Outlook, open up any of these documents, modify them, save the modifications, and the next time I'm connected with Outlook, Outlook will look to synchronize back up to SharePoint. Okay? Now, I want to be real clear. That's out there now in 3.0. Okay, so you've got that capability. But that gets back into when I was saying earlier about how our end users, they want to decide how they want to go after their data. So we've got one guy who just wants to go to Outlook and use Outlook. So I want, if I want to modify it, I'm just going to use Outlook to open up the document modify, and then modify it in Word, save it, and all that kind of good stuff. We've got somebody else who wants to go to the SharePoint site and use Word. We've got somebody else who wants to use uh, the SharePoint uh, services that we just took a look at before. You know, everybody, they all get to choose, but it's the same data. Ends up getting into the same place. 